Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'll pause for 10 seconds as we continue the process of um, popping into the breakout room. So uh, I see some, some familiar faces on my, my Zoom screen toolbar. Um, and I think based on the number of participants we have in the room, I think everyone is here. So my name is Chris Shoemaker. I am the director of the Rye Free Reading Room. Um, it's my privilege to be the host of our conversation today in breakout room uh, number two. I want to thank the legislators for making time uh, to come and uh, talk with the libraries and the library trustees and directors um, and to hear just some of the things that we are doing during this um, challenging and um, and, and uh, different time. So in our room, uh, we have um, Shelley Mayer from uh, Senate District 37. We have Elijah Reichlin Melnick from District 8. We have Peter Harkin from Senate District 40. We have Steve Otis from the 91st Assembly District. Hi, Steve. <laughs> um, nice. Uh, we have Chris Burdick from the 93rd Assembly District. We have Kevin Byron from the 94th Assembly District. And we have Sandy Gelf from the 95th Assembly District. Um, and uh, if you are the staff member for the Assembly, uh, for the representative, um, welcome. I, I only have the, uh, the legislature's names. Uh, I'd like to turn it over first to Shelley. Um, each of our legislators have about three minutes just to um, uh, give an update and introduce themselves in their district uh, and to say a few words. So first up, Shelley. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I, I love this breakfast. Usually we have a fantastic time and it's a very robust breakfast and it's always good because we see our all of our local library folks and our the boards, both of which, as someone who started on a library board, I always really appreciate meeting all the people there. So I represent the 37th district. It goes from the Bronx border in Yonkers up basically the whole east side of Westchester, it includes a, a large portion of Yonkers, uh, Bron East Chester, uh, the entire Sound Shore, including Rye, I'm happy to say and um, moves forward in north and goes all the way up to Bedford. I share with a number of my co assembly colleagues here overlap. Um, I have three big cities, Yonkers, New Rochelle and White Plains. I share with uh, the majority leader, Andre Stewart Cousins. I'm the chair of the Senate Education Committee. Until this year, the library funding was part of sort of my bucket of things in the budget. And I've always fought very hard for full restoration. This year, I'm very pleased that the leader has named a new library committee in the Senate. There always was one in the assembly. Now it is chaired by my colleague, Sean Ryan from Buffalo, who was previously in the assembly. So we are fighting full on for full restoration and in fact, increase, particularly on the capital side for library funding. And we will, I think we all agree, uh, the libraries have played such a critical role during COVID. We wanna to be totally supportive. We know this funding is essential and you certainly have our commitment to do everything we can to both restore and add to library funding. Thank you very much. Um, Senator uh, Elijah uh, Reichlin Melnick. Hi, uh, good morning, everybody. How are you all doing? So, uh, thanks for uh, being uh, having the privilege to join you today, and uh, thanks for getting the pronunciation of my name right. It's not an easy one to do. Um, I am uh, pleased to be joining you for the first time since I was just elected in 2020, uh, representing the 38th Senate District that includes the communities of Ossining and Briarcliff, and then a significant chunk of Rockland County across the river. Um, and uh, I am also pleased to be a member of the Education Committee and, and join my colleague, Senator Mayer, in, in commending the leadership for creating a committee specifically focused on the needs of libraries in our state. Uh, and I think we all know this, but not everybody in the public does, that libraries today 
obviously don't just do what they did 50 years ago. There are so many more services that are provided than simply lending out books and being a place to go and, and read the paper. And from the census to helping people with taxes, uh, to providing internet access, job application help, all of these other things that libraries around our county are doing every single day in a pre-COVID world and working very hard uh, to continue to help people with in this strange world we live in, it is critical. We can't cut back on funding at a time like this. Uh, you know, libraries have been without patrons coming into the buildings for most of the last year. And we don't know when exactly that will resume, but we need to do what we can to make sure that the state is supporting, certainly not cutting back on funding. Um, and I am proud and, and will continue to fight to make sure we are prioritizing the services that libraries provide and funding them adequately. So looking forward to this conversation. Thank you. Um... Senator Peter Harkham from the 40th district, or I, right? He's not, I don't see him there, oh. but I see Senator Jamal Bailey that came, just joined us. Oh, perfect. Good morning, everybody. I, I guess I would just echo the sentiments of my colleagues. I'm the 36th senatorial district, which covers the city of Mount Vernon, which is the central library, as you know, in the Westchester County library system. So it's something that, that is critically important to me. Um, Senator Reichland Melnick said it, said it best, and I think we've said it, all of the members of the Westchester delegation have spoken up, not just in this space and in, others, in many other spaces, about the importance of libraries and, and, and how multifaceted they are in this day and age. Um, libraries are, uh, are more than just a place to check out a book. They are places, especially in communities like Mount Vernon, uh, a place where people have internet access. And, and it, quite frankly, because of the digital divide that persists in our community, um, it is the only place that certain members of my community will be able to access the internet. Um, and, and, and this this is not lost on me. Also, when we're looking at um, uh, violence, I'm looking at um, we're looking at things that are, that, that are taking place in that critical three to five p.m. That, that that we've always learned about post school when things are in quote unquote normal times. Libraries are are, are a haven for my community. They are they are so critical, and because because of the work of the of the Mount Vernon Library and the Westchester Library system, they have been a destination in Mount Vernon. It is somewhere that is cool to go. Um, I'm 37. I'm 38 years old. Wow, I'm 38 years old. And when I was growing up, libraries were not the place to go. I didn't want to be in a library. I wasn't trying to go to the library. I was trying to play basketball. Kids want to go to the library now, and I think that we should be we should be doing more to stimulate that. To say, you know what, if you want to go there. Those of us in government, we should be facilitating that, and and, and I'm and I'm doing some things on my end to try to help out the Westchester, um, excuse me, the Mount Vernon Library. I'm 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 moving some things along on my end, but but rest assured that that you have my support to uh, advocate for, as Senator May aptly put it, not just to to, to keep it as a, as a flat flat line, but to increase it if we possibly can because it is so critical and so crucial. So you can count on me in 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 many different ways and count on me to advocate for continuing fund funding and advocacy for the Westchester Library. So I just want to say thank you for all that you do as well. Thank you very much, Senator. Uh, Assembly Member Steve Otis. Thanks, Chris. Nice to see you and nice to see all uh, my great library friends. Uh, uh, I, I represent the New Rochelle Public Library, the Largemont Library, the Maranac Library, the Rye Free Reading Room, and the Porchester Rye Brook Library. I only know my district based upon libraries. What can I say? But I, uh, you know, we're all unanimous in trying to restore the funds. And it was very disappointing because of COVID last year, where in past years we were unable, we were able to restore cuts um, and operating aid, and especially the capital construction grants, which had been at 34 million. And then uh, two years ago, it was cut back to 14. We successfully restored it. Last year, we were not able to restore it. And so we were at 14 for the past year. We need to get back up to 34 and above, and especially from Westchester, where um, so many Westchester libraries take advantage of those capital dollars. They're so vital for your upgrading your, your facilities. Uh, I'm on the education committee. And I am also, uh, for eight years, was on the library committee in the assembly, but I had to give that up to take on the chairmanship of a new committee on science and technology. And in that new committee, one of the uh, new proposals that uh, I am trying to see if we can advance in the budget 
is a proposal to create a statewide grant program for, for digital inclusion or digital navigator programs. And many libraries around the country are really the kinds of organizations that get those grants. And the, the, the model is that you provide an underserved individual. The digital divide is really based upon um, race, class, age, economics, that's who's left out of the technology of today. Libraries are a key way that people are getting access when they come to you. But digital navigator programs basically provide uh, funding for getting a connection, getting a device to an individual who does not have a, a device, and uh, also providing a training element, which is so vitally important. You can give someone a connection, you can give someone a device, but if you don't really train and educate uh, on the technological side and how to take advantage of it, uh, you're not really providing full equity. And so uh, this is the first statewide program being proposed in this state. We'll see if we can get it in the budget this year but it's going on in other states around the country and uh, libraries with other not-for-profits are the kinds of entities that take advantage and become the engine that powers these kinds of programs. So I'll keep you posted with more details, uh, but it certainly is something that would give you another tool to su serve the communities that you all serve. Great to be with you as always. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Assembly member Chris Burdick. Thank you very much, and it's great to join you. And uh, as many may know, I succeeded David Buckwald, representing the 93rd Assembly District, which spans uh, Northern Westchester and goes down to include Harrison and about half of the city of White Plains. And Terry uh, had mentioned, Terry Kirshner had mentioned that there are 38 public libraries in the county and I represent 12 of them. So I represent a lot of libraries and I wanna share with you briefly my own personal connection with libraries. Uh, my late mother was a librarian, professional librarian for over 20 years. And my entire family takes great joy in the use of the public libraries. Um, and my youngest daughter, went to Bedford Village Elementary School, which for those who know Bedford Village, it's a short distance to the Bedford Village Public Library. And so after school, my, since my wife was working, she would walk from the elementary school to the library where the director there took her under her wing. And over the years, she started first as a volunteer and then she moved up to work part-time in middle school and so forth. So that became part of her blood. And every one of my children, every one of my family members really rely upon libraries. And I have to tell you what a refuge it is throughout the pandemic to be able to have that, to have the books either digitally or even delivered at home uh, to pick them up with remote delivery. So. We, I have a very personal interest in it. And as some may know, prior to my coming to the assembly, I served as supervisor of the town of Bedford for seven years. Now we have three independent public libraries in Bedford, one for each hamlet. They're independent of the town government. But the town of Bedford, and I'm very proud to say, provides over 70% of the funding. And I was an ardent supporter of such funding through the entire time, first as a member of the town board and then in my seven years as supervisor. And to continue that support of li libraries as a member of the assembly, earlier this month, uh, this month I joined assemblywoman Kimberly Jean-Pierre in her call, in her letter to the speaker for a full restoration of the executive cuts to funding for aid to public libraries and with an additional increase to 123.1 million for total state library aid, a, a total of 45 million in library construction aid and other programs. And as you heard from Shelley Mayer who led us off in this discussion, 
you really have the unanimous support of the entire Westchester delegation in, in our battle to try to restore and increase the funding for public libraries. So it's really a pleasure to join you uh, here today. And you can count and rely upon my support for public libraries. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Uh, Assembly member uh, Kevin Byrne. Well, thanks for having me. Um, just to echo what my colleagues already said, it, it's been mentioned that you have the unanimous support of uh, the delegation of Westchester. And as the one minority member uh, representing Westchester, I completely agree. This is one of the most nonpartisan issues that I could possibly think of. Uh, Steve Otis mentioned that budget fix bill from a couple of years ago, uh, where we were, we were able to successfully restore some of those cuts. I think it was the most non-controversial budget bill I've ever seen because it restored some infrastructure funding, helped uh, enhance sec securing communities against hate crimes funding, and of course, helping our libraries. Uh, just by way of introduction, I, I do represent the towns of Yorktown, Somers, as well as a large portion of Putnam County. So there's the John C. Hart Memorial Library and there's the Somers Library in, in Reese Park. Um, I, I know as recently as uh, this past year, uh, John C. Hart Memorial Li Library has benefited uh, a couple times from the uh, construction aid or capital aid. And uh, that is something that I know we, we need to get uh, uh, restored. Uh, I've signed on to letters from uh, my colleagues, uh, Steve Hawley, as well as the majority letter that was circulated that uh, Mr. Burdick mentioned as well. Uh, I think the pandemic only highlighted the importance and need of our libraries. Um, obviously, I think you all had some very uh, challenging times in, in how you're able to deliver your programs, uh, a lot of it uh, just remotely, but at the same time, the value was, was, was there. And uh, what Senator Bailey said about having libraries be a, a place for people to, to meet, um, particularly uh, hopefully post-COVID, um, it, it, that's the truth. I mean, when I was, but before I was in elected office and I was just finishing graduate studies, um, you know, I was a little older, not like young high school age or anything, but I would stop by the library all the time, every day after work, before heading home to do all my graduate work, um, put my nose in a book because there's less distractions there. Um, and I would see young people after school go to the library and, uh, you know, a lot of times people think, oh, this library is just for this one community. And again, I said I represent Mayapac and, and Mayapac in Putnam County and, and Mayapac has a really beautiful library. But you'll see people from Westchester go up to Mayapac if the one in Yorktown's too booked. So they work together. There is that network uh, that I know uh, we benefit by, we, we all benefit from. And I just wanted to put one plug in. I know this is really more about budget, but uh, I do have a bill. Uh, that I just want to throw out there for anyone that listens or, or interested is interested in it's uh, Assembly Bill number four five four four. It's not about aid, but it is about public health and our libraries. Uh, there's an issue that I have in Carmel uh, Reed Memorial Library, right next door to it. Like I mean, literally right next door is a vape shop. Uh, and in the past, our um, state passed laws to re restrict marketing of tobacco and vape products near school districts and, and school property, I think it would make sense to have something similar near our public libraries because we do have people there for youth programs and, and having a, uh, a tobacco shop right next door uh, with marketing I think is inappropriate. So if anyone's interested in learning more, the assembly bill number is 4544. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't see assembly member, um, Sandy Galef on the call. Is there a, a, a staff representative or any other legislators that are part of the our room that are not on my official list? We're sending out a search party for our missing members. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, I want to thank you all for being such strong library supporters. Um, as, as the director of the Rye Free Reading Room, I know I can um, call on Senator Mayer and Assembly Member Otis and talk to them about anything related to libraries. And um, uh, I've had many good conversations uh, with Steve about um, uh, construction projects and library aid. And I just wanna thank all of you 
for the work that you do to make sure that libraries are able to deliver our programs and services to the community. Um, as Terry mentioned, this has been an, ex an extraordinary year, despite the fact that we were many of us were closed for um, several months while New York was on pause. We saw our digital collections experience a spike in usage. Um, one of the challenges that we face is digital content is significantly more expensive than our traditional print uh, materials. We pay anywhere between, uh, for, the, for the item you download from Amazon um, for $9.99, we pay anywhere between $69 and $129 uh, for a, uh, a one copy, one use license. Um, and so every, every effort we have to do digital outreach to get more people connected with content um, does have a impact on our budget. In addition to that, as the uh, vaccine process has rolled out, we've been spending even more on personal protective equipment for our staff so that we can have people um, up close with seniors or others who need assistance navigating the vaccine process. Um, it's not something that's entirely easy to do over the phone and does require a significant in-person element. Um, so those additional expenses um, and the fact that um, while library workers are um, performing and are serving in the education capacity, um, the fact that there has not been um, a huge amount of discussion over library worker prioritization in the vaccine process. I know Terry has sent out a letter um, uh, requesting consideration and um, that uh, we've spoken with some of our local legislators about it. But those are two of the, the immediate concerns I think that many of my fellow directors would have uh, in relation to library services and, and um, the future of what we can be doing. But I do wanna not be the only director who talks and um, there are many of your uh, constituents here on, on the call as well. So, if any other, if another director, if you'd like to just raise your hand, we can unmute and um, uh, uh, turn it over to you. Um, can, I, can I say something? Yeah. Okay. This is Donna from the Briarcliff Manor Public Library. And I just wanted to touch on how libraries also teach us about each other. And yesterday was the end of what I would consider in all ways a successful program. It was a four week um, college course taught by a college professor, the golden age of jazz. And it was a collaboration among seven government agencies at all different levels, local, county, state, and federal. And I just wanted to read um, an excerpt from a nice email that one of the attendees sent yesterday after the program ended. And she said, the course was also a great history lesson. Sam, who was the professor, provided many insights into the African-American experience, illustrated through personal stories about the musicians. He provided examples of some of the many barriers placed in their paths that they managed to overcome to our great collective benefit. And I just wanted to point out that at libraries, not only do we provide books and eBooks, but we provide programs um, so that way we can learn about each other. And I think that that's another important aspect of what we do. So thank you for supporting it. Anyway. Thank you, Donna. Uh, uh, any other directors or uh, trustees? I think I see Edie. Oh. Oh, perfect. We, we can start with, okay, Edie, go ahead. Hi, yes. Um, well, I just want to say on behalf of uh, my board, uh, my community and myself and my staff, I'd like to thank um, you for all the, the support that we've been getting from our legislators. Um, in the past, we have taken um, advantage of many of these uh, uh, building incentives that we've been getting in the state grants. We've, we've done um, enormous amounts to increase the space utilized by the public, uh, in, increase the, uh, improve the infrastructure of our libraries. And um, I think it's, it's been appreciated by all the community and the staff itself. And I just wanted to thank you 
um, although I feel like I'm preaching to the choir because obviously we do have the support, um, but I just wanted to reiterate uh, how we appreciate it and how um, support like this enables us to use our operating funds for this, the digital and the uh, material supplies that we supply to our community. Uh, we don't have to worry about building an elevator out of our operating funds because it would be impossible. So um, it's enabled us to do a lot of improvements over the years. And um, I thank you. I just, I, I know I can count on support for future times. Thank you. Thank you, Edie. I think we have a comment from Lewisboro. Uh, good morning. Um, I want to uh, let uh, all of our legislators know um, how we appreciate that uh, uh, all of the legislators from the Northern uh, that support our part of the county. We're, we're grateful that you work together and that you're all behind us. Um, we look forward to working with uh, Chris Burdick as he was just elected and we appreciate his um, support of libraries. Um, as Edie had said, the support that we get from the New York State uh, Legislature, for example, last year we received um, a bullet aid grant and uh, 2020 was very challenging for us, for our budget and our finances. Um, and the bullet aid grant we got in the beginning of the year turned out to be very crucial for us for our operating fund. Um, as Chris also um, said um, from Rye that um, uh, the digital content usage um, for us, it rose 60%. And during the, when New York was on pause, um, I felt like we were a beacon in the darkness for our library patrons. Um, that they were still able to borrow books digitally at a time when they couldn't borrow them from the library. And um, for many people, you know, buying books from Amazon and the stores were closed were not, not an option for them. So I know it was uh, a lot of our patrons are extremely grateful for that. Um, also with our virtual programs, um, we heard from families with toddlers that were so grateful. Uh, they were still able to see our children's librarian um, on our virtual programs. And um, they reported it was a source of comfort for their children to see somebody who was such a, uh, uh, an important part of their lives from coming to the library and they were still able to see her. So on behalf of our library and our board and our patrons, we really appreciate your support and we look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you, Cindy. And uh, I see Laura has her hand up. Hi, uh, I'm Laura Eckley. I'm the director of the Larchmont Public Library. I'll be quick because I know we just have a few minutes left. I really just want to echo everyone else's um, gratitude to our uh, state representatives. We know um, just how much support we have across Westchester from you uh, at the state level. We're incredibly grateful for it. Larchmont's a frequent flyer in the construction aid program. Um, we've benefited from SAM grants as well as library construction grants. I'm sitting in our beautifully renovated library, which you can look out on, and um, none of that would have been possible without the help of state funding. And I just want to echo um, Representative Bailey's comments that after our last renovation, we became a destination where teenagers wanted to come after school. That was beyond our wildest expectations. We hoped they would come here when they needed to come here and we became a hotspot destination for high schoolers after school. And that was just a, you know, really an incredible benefit of um, being able to do all of that construction. Um, and I just also have to mention, I have to just say that our, our staffs all across the county have just been incredible during this pandemic. Um, we've proven ourselves to be nimble and adaptable, which I don't necessarily think are adjectives that people might have applied to libraries ahead of the pandemic, but we have certainly risen to the challenge and changed the way that we do library service almost on a daily basis for the past year. And we'll continue to do that until we can return to um, new normal, whatever that's going to be. And um, I'm just gonna echo Chris's uh, comment that um, our most valuable asset in any library is our staff. Um, many of you may not know that um, 
30% of the library staff here in Larchmont uh, became ill with coronavirus in the week after we closed in late March of last year. Um, since then, we're up to 50% of our staff has contracted the coronavirus. And vaccinating staff of um, libraries is really is something that we hope that our representatives will continue to advocate for at the state level. Um, we consider ourselves educators. We consider ourselves essential workers. We'd like to be able to reopen as soon as possible. And we ask for your help in putting our um, staff in group 1B so that they can start getting the vaccine. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Um, we have, I think probably between one and two minutes left. Um, any additional comments or um, questions? I think we have something from Jill. Um, hi, I'm Jill Davis. I am uh, the director of the Hendrick Hudson Free Library and I am um, represented by the, your two lost colleagues. Um, but I just wanted to say that I, I agree with everything that's been said here. And I did wanna mention that, so the Hendrick Hudson Free Library is a very green library. Um, we have been certified by um, the Green Business Partnership. We've received you know, awards from New York State and from the county, which um, is terrific. And some of what we were able to do was because of construction grant money. So we were able to put solar panels on our building, which you know, the money that was given to us for that project you know, comes back to our community because we've been able to cut our electric bill virtually in half, if not more, um, with the panels. So I think that that that's a really, really good thing that people don't think about um, when they think of libraries, that we are leaders, not only in what we provide for people in education, but education outside of the walls of what people think libraries are. So I thank you all for your help. And um, I know that I know that um, Senator Harkum and uh, Assemblywoman Gala are very supportive of um, all of all of the libraries. Thank you. You know, I was just going to chime in there. I don't represent uh, your library, and uh, I'm glad you said that about uh, the senator and assembly member because I'm on that community advisory panel for the closure of Indian Point, and I understand just the economic impact that that's going to have on your community. And um, I know they're they they're very very much focused on it. Yeah, us us specifically. So we lose a third of our budget. Yeah, so it only makes the call for this even more important. That's the way I look at it. Thank you, Jill. Um, I think we have less than a minute left. So before we jump back into the main room, I just want to say thank you um, to all of our legislators and representatives for the work that you do to support libraries. Thank you for um, making sure that we are able to serve our our public um, and we are able to be those beacons in a, a very challenging time. We appreciate your support and look forward to continuing working with you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Chris. So I think the I think the other room is just doing their final wrap up as well, and then we should be returning to the uh, the main room briefly. I apologize. I do have to jump for uh, first of all I have to travel back to my office, and then I have another Zoom that I'm going to be <laughs> late for. But uh, thanks again for having me. I, I really do appreciate it, and anything we can do to work together. Uh, to try to restore this funding on there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Assemblymember Byrne. Safe travels. Okay. I'm just going to stick around and make sure everybody makes it out of here. <laughs> Thank you, Krishna, for all your help. Yeah, no problem. Excellent job moderating. Okay.